but him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. But he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. The testament of God is another eye-opening testimony that could help all Israelites in the awakening. God is the ninth son of Jacob from Zilpha. Zilpha is Leah's handmaid. Once Leah noticed she stopped bearing children, she gave to Jacob her handmaid in Zilpha as a second wife to bore children on her behalf. When Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpha her maid and gave her Jacob to wife. The competition between Rachel and Leah was intense. Their competition consists of who can bear the most children for Jacob. Little did they know the children they were eager to have for Jacob would become the most coveted bloodline in the history of mankind. The sacred covenant the Most High made with Abraham that was passed down to Isaac from Isaac transferred to Jacob solidified the importance of the Israelite bloodline. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. The reason the Most High chose the Israelites to show himself strong through, the Most High wanted the Israelite family to be a light to the world. Through the Israelite family bloodline, the Most High wanted to win the heart of the other families to him. The Most High chose the Israelites, not because they were without sin or the greatest people at the time he made his selection. The Most High chose the Israelite family because they were the fewest of all people. Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. The job of the Israelites was to show and teach all the other families on the earth about their creator. The Most High chose Abraham and his descendants to be a God to them. Through Abraham and the Israelites who inherited Abraham's covenant, all the families of the earth would be blessed. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Notice the Most High said all the families. A bloodline is a family clan. A bloodline is not people from different families coming together to make a nation. A bloodline is one family unit. The Most High create people that were made in his image and likeness. The way he identified his people was through their bloodline, their family clan. The Most High don't look at the outward appearance because his creation, the man and the woman he made have the same appearance. Every family clan or bloodline was called after the head of that family. The Satans use race and appearance to blend the tares into the original people's population. The Satans made men look at the outward appearance versus bloodline. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Today, there are many people claiming the chosen people's heritage. These people are a mixture of people from different backgrounds coming together to claim the Israelite bloodline. The scriptures are not being fulfilled through the people. The leaders of this world claim to be the descendants of the chosen people, the Israelites. The first question to ask is all the families on this earth being blessed through the people the world recognize as the chosen people? How is the scriptures in Genesis chapter 12 verse 3 being fulfilled? The people the world recognize as the chosen people set up a system that creates generational wealth for their people only. 
All the families in this earth are not being blessed through the people the world recognized as the chosen people. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. One percent of the world's population hoards the world's wealth, while billions of families living in third world countries in poverty. The families who don't live in the third world countries live in impoverished neighborhoods, set up by the one percenters through discrimination and biased lending practices. These are the same bankers that were kicked out of many countries for shady business practices all over the world. Today they are claiming to be the chosen people the Bible speak of. Being kicked out of a country is not the same with being exiled and left destitute in your enemy's land. The people who are claiming the chosen people's heritage lock themselves away in their gated, secluded communities. If you're not one of them, you can't live there. If they make an exception, they will persecute you until you move out of their communities. How are the scriptures being fulfilled that say through them all the families of this earth would be blessed? The word of the Most High said, everything written must be fulfilled. These be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. There is a group of people that were scattered throughout the world. These people were forced into hard labor with no wages. These people built the superpower countries of today. They labor for free all over the world. Through forced labor, they built the modern cities of Babel that all people in their countries benefit and profit from. Until this day, the descendants of the colonizers are benefiting from the wealth they obtain from the free labor they receive from the enslaved people that built the superpower nations of today. The same nations that they built treat them like garbage. The enslaved people became bywords all over the world, just as the scripture said the chosen people would be in the land of their captivity. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. Sounds to me, the people who were enslaved and used to build the superpower nations of today, all people profit from the enslaved people's free labor. The rulers of those nations continue to profit as long as the descendants of the enslaved people remain in their countries. The descendants of the enslaved people don't have a nation of their own, nor are they interested in building communities. They spend every penny they get in the heathen's community, increasing the heathen's economy. They are making the heathen's millionaires and billionaires. Sounds to me the enslaved people and their descendants are the people Genesis chapter 12 verse 3 is speaking of. It was prophesied that the chosen people would go into captivity all over the world. If you're among the rich in the nations you live in, how are you in captivity? Never in history, the people that are recognized as the chosen people in the beast system went into captivity by force into all nations. And I will scatter thee among the heathen and disperse thee in the countries, and will consume thy filthiness out of thee. Being expelled from hundreds of countries for shady business practices is not the same as being exiled from your country and enslaved in strange land. The people the beast system said are the chosen people control almost all major corporations of today. In addition, they have the influence to change laws. A person in captivity don't have that kind of power. The imposters are not fulfilling scriptures, not even a little bit. The northern kingdom of Israel remained in the land they sojourned after the Assyrian captivity. In those land, they were colonized. That is how the tribes that are not scattered are under control by their enemies. Remember, the seed of the fallen came from the north and parted Africa and all the land in the world through colonization. They planted their seed and stole the legacy and identity of the natives. Today, the next generation of colonizers, the tares, keep the tradition going. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The truth shall make you free. 
Israelites, regardless of how similar the tares appear to be, throughout history, they've always sided and gravitated towards their father, the beast that walked like a man. Don't be fooled by them. There's a reason the Most High will gather them in the end to burn them. The Testament of God will give you another perspective to the concept of sowing and reaping. The Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs are full of life lessons. If we take heed to those lessons, we can't go wrong in serving the Most High in the Spirit and in truth. Israelites, although the scriptures in the Bible do not give us the -the behind-the-scenes events that took place that caused the Most High to do the things He has done, know that the Most High is just in all of His ways. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all His ways are judgment, a God of truth, and without iniquity, just and right is he. A lot of people perceive because nothing happens to them after sin, they believe they have gotten away with their iniquity. Not so. The Most High see all and he would judge all things. There is nothing that is hidden from him. The Testament of God surely revealed this. The scriptures is correct when it say the Most High will punish the children for the iniquity of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. If you don't repent, you will suffer until the Most High bring you down to your knees to repent. Israelites, I encourage you to make repentance a daily routine. Sow seeds that will bring good fruits. Do not sow seed that will bring corruption and suffering to your people and descendants. Our fathers understood this. That is why they gathered their children to them, not only to bless them, but to prophesy to them about their future. All of the fathers expressed their desires to see their children in the coming kingdom. The 12 gates in the New Jerusalem are called after each tribe. And had a wall great and high and had twelve gates, and at the gate twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. The patriarchs to our nation want to see their tribes as numerous as the sand of the sea in the coming kingdom. In the testament of Judah, Judah said that him and his brothers will awake and be the head of their tribes in the coming kingdom. And after these things shall Abraham and Isaac and Jacob arise unto life, and I and my brethren shall be chiefs of the tribes of Israel. If we take heed to their instructions and not allow the Satans deceive us with the affairs of this world, we will obtain salvation. If we uphold the statutes and commandments of the Most High, just like our fathers command of us, we will see the coming kingdom. Israelites, listen to the truth of the word of the Most High. The truth shall make you free. By now, you are aware of the competition between Rachel and Leah. Because of the competition between Leah and Rachel, Leah gave Jacob her handmaid, Zilpha, for a wife when she saw that she stopped bearing children. When Zilpha conceived and bore a son to Jacob, just like Rachel named Bilhah's children, Leah named her handmaid Zilpha's children as well. Leah said, a truth cometh, and she called Zilpah's firstborn son, Gad. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob's son. And Leah said, a troop cometh, and she called his name Gad. In the nation of Israel, the name of a child revealed a lot about his or her character, as well as their destiny and purpose. Leah said that a troop has come, therefore she named him Gad. Gad means happiness, fortune, and luck. When Jacob gathered his sons to him to bless them and to reveal their fate in the latter days, Jacob said to God that a troop will overcome him, but he will overcome at last. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Gad, a troop shall overcome him but he shall overcome at the last. With the blessings Jacob bestow upon his children, at times it's difficult to determine if there are blessings or a curse. Nevertheless, Jacob said a troop will overcome God. What did Jacob mean when he said a troop will overcome God? In the Testament of Issachar, 
Issachar said that he was given the blessings of the first fruits. Issachar said Gad was given the blessings of troops. It was given to Gad to destroy the troops that would come upon Israel. And do ye therefore obey them and walk in the singleness of your father. For unto Gad hath it been given to destroy the troops that are coming upon Israel. Did an army overcome Gad? Looking at the state of our people, it's clear that Gad and our people was consumed by numerous heathen armies. Before the northern kingdom was led into captivity by the Assyrian king, right before the Israelites was going to inherit the promised land, the Gadites and the Reubenites saw that the land they settled in was perfect for their cattle. The tribe of Reuben and of Gad had a lot of cattle. They asked Moses if they could have the land of Jazer and Gilead for a possession. Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. And when they saw the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead, that behold, the place was a place for cattle. The children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spake unto Moses and to Eleazar the priest and unto the princes of the congregation, saying, Adareth and Dibon and Jazer and Nimrah and Heshbon and Elialeh and Shebam and Nebo and Beon. Even the country which the Lord smote before the congregation of Israel is a land for cattle, and thy servants have cattle. Wherefore said they, If we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto thy servants for a possession, and bring us not over Jordan. Moses thought that the children of Gad and Reuben did not want to go to war. Moses felt that if the tribe of Reuben and Gad stayed in the land they requested to have, it would discourage the Israelites from going to possess the land over the Jordan. And Moses said unto the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war, and shall ye sit here? And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord hath given them? Moses felt that history would repeat itself if the tribe of Reuben and Gad did not cross over the Jordan. Moses reminded them of what happened to the generation of men that went to spy on the promised land and came back with a bad report about the land. Due to the spies' lies, nobody from that generation was able to inherit the promised land except for Caleb and Joshua. The Most High made the Israelites wander in the wilderness until the generation that transgressed died. Moses reminded the tribe of Gad and Reuben that they are the descendants of the generation that rebelled and died in the wilderness. And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness forty years, until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was consumed. And behold, ye are risen up in your father's stead, an increase of sinful men, to augment yet the fierce anger of the Lord toward Israel. For if ye turn away from after him, he will yet again leave them in the wilderness, and ye shall destroy all this people. The Gadites and the Reubenites were sincere in their requests. They said they would build shelters for their children and animals. They would go and fight with the rest of the Israelites to remove the heathens from their land. The children of Gad and Reuben said they would not return to their land until all the tribes inherited their land. And they came near unto him and said, we will build sheepfolds here for our cattle and cities for our little ones. But we ourselves will go ready armed before the children of Israel until we have brought them unto their place. And our little ones shall dwell in the fenced cities because of the inhabitants of the land. We will not return unto our houses until the children of Israel have inherited every man his inheritance. For we will not inherit with them on yonder side Jordan or forward because our inheritance is fallen to us on this side, Jordan, eastward. Moses made a covenant with the children of Gad and Reuben. If they went to war to fight the Canaanites on the promised land with their brethren, they could possess the land they requested to have. The Gadites and the Reubenites did as they said. Therefore, they inherited the land they requested. The Reubenites, the Gadites, and half of the tribe of Manasseh. When Leah said a troop has come, the Most High blessed the tribe of God with mighty men of war to destroy the armies that came upon the Israelites when they went to possess the promised land. Just like the testament of Issachar said, the blessing of God was to destroy the troops that come against the Israelites. 
Jacob said God would be overcome by an army. The tribe of God did succumb to an army. The armies the Most High sent against his people to remove them from his presence when they fell into the abominable sin of idolatry, the Assyrian army. Moses blessed the tribe of God as well as all the tribes before his death. And of God, he said, Blessed be he that enlargeth God. He dwelleth as a lion, and teareth the arm with the crown of the head. And he provided the first part for himself, because there, in a portion of the lawgiver, was he seated. And he came with the heads of the people. He executed the justice of the Lord, and his judgments with Israel. Moses said a lot of notable things about the tribe of God. Moses said, Bless is he that enlarged God. He dwelled as a lion. Judah is described as to being a strong warrior. The testament of Judah revealed that Judah had an angel of might that followed him everywhere. God was also strong. The testament of God said that God is a shepherd and a strong man, but he was a murderer at heart. Like his brother Dan, God wanted to kill Joseph. When God gathered his children to him before he transitioned to the afterlife, he said to his children that he was good at keeping flocks. Hearken, my children, I was the knife son born to Jacob, and I was valiant in keeping the flocks. God's talent of being a shepherd transferred to his children. His tribe had a lot of flock. That is why they requested to have the land that was before the Jordan as their inheritance. In the testament of God, God said to his children that he killed lions, bears, wolves, and many other wild animals that tried to attack his flock with his bare hands. Many of Jacob's sons were skilled on killing wild predators with their bare hands. Accordingly, I guarded at night the flock, and whenever the lion came or the wolf or any wild beast against the fold, I pursued it and overtake it, I seized its foot with my hand and hurled it about a stone's throw and so killed it. God had to be strong if he was anointed to destroy the troops that came against the Israelites. God did not talk about the blessings Jacob spoke over him in his testament. God mostly addressed the conflict between Joseph and him to his children. The testament of God revealed that Joseph was a snitch. He would tell his father everything his brothers did. Because Jacob loved Joseph so much, he believed everything he said. When Joseph lied on God to his father, God hated Joseph until the day he was sold. And Joseph told our father that the sons of Zilpha and Bilhah were slaying the best of the flock and eating them against the judgment of Reuben and Judah. For he saw that I have delivered a lamb out of the mouth of a bear and put the bear to death, but has slain the lamb, being grieved concerning it that it could not live and that we had eaten it. And regarding this matter, I was wrought with Joseph until the day that he was sold. And the spirit of hatred was in me, and I wished not either to hear of Joseph with the ears or see him with the eyes, because he rebuked us to our faces, saying that we were eating up the flock without Judah. For whatsoever thing he told our father, he believed him. God confessed that he hated Joseph. God wanted to kill Joseph because he hated him from his heart. If a person hates you in their heart, that is a deep-rooted hatred. God said that he hated Joseph even more for his dreams. I confess now, my jinn, my children, that oftentimes I wish to kill him because I hated him from my heart. Moreover, I hated him yet more for his dreams, and I wish to lick him out of the land of the living, even as an ox licketh up the grass of the field. In the testament of God, God said to his children to not go astray through the spirit of hatred. The spirit of hatred is evil in all the doings of men. God said that hate work against the most high. And now, my children, hearken to the words of truth to work righteousness and all the law of the most high and go not astray through the spirit of hatred, for it is evil in all the doings of men. Beware, therefore, my children of hatred. For it worketh lawlessness even against the Lord himself. For it will not hear the words of his commandments concerning the loving of one's neighbor, and it sinneth against God. 
I did a message a few years back saying that every personality trait is a spirit. Many Israelites couldn't comprehend that personality traits are spirits. Everything the Most High created is living. Some are visible, while some of the Most High's creations are invisible. Many people are being misled by legions of unclean spirits because they mistake these devils as personality traits. Many people don't seek deliverance from negative personality traits because they are taught that a person's personality is a part of them. Not so, my people. If you want wisdom, you must ask the Most High for wisdom, and the Most High will send the spirit of wisdom. Anger is a spirit. Envy and jealousy is a spirit. Meekness is a spirit. So many Israelites and indigenous black people are living a defeated life because unclean spirits that influence them daily go unnoticed. How can a devil flee from you if you don't know if it's there? The people of the Most High must graduate to spirit to better understand the world you live in. How are you serving the Most High in the spirit if you don't understand spirit? God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit, and in truth. The awakening is more than what you can see. You need to be able to discern the behind-the-scenes events taking place that the eye of the flesh cannot see. The people of the Most High must stop analyzing everything with a carnal mind. If you come to this channel with a carnal mind, everything you hear on this channel won't make sense. If your spirit is right with the Most High, everything you hear on this channel will make sense. The Most High seek for his people to serve him in the spirit and in truth. God revealed in his testament that hate is a spirit. God warned his children against the spirit of hate. The Bible also revealed to us that unclean spirits work together to accomplish their goal. The book of Matthew revealed that once a person is delivered from an unclean spirit, the spirit stays in dry places searching for a new home. If it can't find a home, it returns to the person it was cast out of with other spirits more wicked than itself to take over that person. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. The testament of God revealed that the spirit of hate worked with Satan to bring death. That is how Satan convinced Cain to kill his brother Abel through the spirit of hate. Watch the spirit playlist on this channel to get more information on how united the kingdom of darkness is, as well as what spirits work together. God said the spirit of hate worked together with Satan and the spirit of love worked with the most high. For the spirit of hatred worketh together with Satan through hastiness of spirits in all things to men's death. But the spirit of love worketh together with the law of God in long suffering unto the salvation of men. Hatred, therefore, is evil, for it constantly madeth with lying, speaking against the truth, and it maketh small things to be great, and causeth the light to be darkness, and calleth the sweet bitter, and teacheth slander, and kindleth wrath, and stir up war, and violence in all covetousness. It filleth the earth with evils and devilish poison. These things, therefore, I say to you from experience, my children, that ye may drive forth hatred, which is of the devil, and cleave to the love of God. In the testament of God, God said to his children, he learned his lessons through repentance. God repented for his participation in the plot against Joseph, his brother. God talked about true repentance. These things I learnt at last, after I had repented concerning Joseph. For true repentance after a godly sort destroyeth ignorance, and driveth away the darkness, and enlighteneth the eyes, and giveth knowledge to the soul, and leadeth the mind to salvation. And those things which it hath not learnt from men, it knoweth through repentance. 
Israelites, true repentance will cause a person to change their ways. Repentance is turning away from sin. The beast culture taught the people that repentance is saying, I repent and continue to engage in the sin that they are repenting from. If you don't turn away from the sin, you didn't repent. In the Testament of God, God said to his children that by the way a man transgress is the same way he is punished. When I read that verse in the Testament of God, the Holy Spirit remind me of the Most High's concept of sowing and reaping. The scriptures in the Bible said, whatever a man sow, that shall he reap. For by what things a man transgress, by the same also is he punished. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. The Holy Spirit highlighted that verse in the Testament of God for me to answer a prayer that I had many years ago. For a long time, I struggled to understand how could the Most High allow his people to be sold into slavery. Many Israelites in the diaspora shared the same struggle until how can the Most High allow the enemy to treat us the way that they do in the land of our captivity. Before my awakening, I asked the Most High, why am I a descendant of a slave? I asked the Most High, why am I being held accountable for the sins of my fathers? The Most High answered my prayers with the verse in the book of God. The same way a person transgress, the same way he will be punished. The scriptures in the Bible doesn't give us the complete story to an event that happened in our family's bloodline that changed the lives of all of us. The scriptures in the Bible made it seem as if the sin of our fathers selling their brother into slavery was a small sin. The scriptures made it seem as if the Most High did not judge them. The scriptures made it seem as if all of Jacob's sons conspired to kill their brother Joseph. The scriptures in the Bible made it appear as if all the brothers agreed to sell Joseph. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore. And let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say, some evil beast hath devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. The scriptures in the Bible said Reuben saved Joseph by suggesting putting him in a pit and later on he would return to save him from the pit. The scriptures said Judah suggests selling Joseph instead of killing him. The scriptures in the Bible made it seem as if all the brothers was there when Joseph was sold to the Ishmaelites. The Bible went on to say they were all content in selling Joseph. We know that Reuben was not there when he was sold. The scriptures reveal Reuben returned to the pit to save Joseph. When Reuben arrived, he saw that Joseph was not there. And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. If Reuben was present when Joseph was sold, why would he return to the pit to save Joseph? All of the sons of Jacob was not there when he was sold. Only a few of them were there and truly content in selling or killing Joseph. The way the scriptures in the Bible illustrated that story is not accurate. The workers of iniquity tried to mask the great sin of the sons of Jacob towards their brother, Joseph. Many indigenous black people can't comprehend that black people sold other black people to the colonizers. The Most High highlighted that verse to me as well as the other verses in the Testament of God to reveal to me that Judah sold Joseph quietly to the Ishmaelites. And Judah sold him secretly to the Ishmaelites. The scriptures in the Bible confirm it was Judah that suggests selling Joseph and it was Judah that actually sold his brother Joseph into slavery. 
Some of the sons of Jacob did not want to sell nor kill their brother. However, all of the sons of Jacob became guilty when they came up with a lie to cover up their transgression. Israelites, this is why you shouldn't participate in other people's sins. When you remain silent, you are just as guilty. And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. For a long time, I struggled with why we were sold. The punishment of being sold goes back to Joseph being sold into slavery by my father and many other Israelites in the diaspora's father, Judah. To the Israelites in the diaspora, if you're from the tribe of Judah, if you struggle like I did about being a descendant of slaves, the testament of God said the same way a man transgressed, the same way he would be punished. What tribe was predominantly sold into slavery? Judah. Where did the Most High said he would gather Judah? From the four corners of this world. Whatever a man sow, that shall he reap. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Judah sold Joseph into slavery. The Most High sold his children into slavery. To the sons of Israel and the daughters of Zion, if you don't like what you're reaping, sow better seeds. The sin against Joseph was a major turning point in the Israelite bloodline. The Most High is just in everything that he does. Just because the Most High chose the Israelites to be the people called by his name, this does not conclude they are without sin. The Israelites are dispersed and in captivity because of the multitude of their sins. The indigenous black people are guilty of selling their own into slavery. The sons of Jacob did it. The heathen tribes turn around and sold Jew Israelites into slavery, predominantly the tribe of Judah. The awakening is about repentance and not about pride and boasting that you are the Israelites. All of the sons of Jacob who participated in the crime against Joseph were punished along with their children. The sons of Jacob who plotted to sell Joseph, their descendants are also in the diaspora. God hated Joseph. He said that in his liver, he set mercilessly against Joseph. Therefore, in his liver, he suffered mercilessly for as long as he was angry with Joseph. Since, therefore, my liver was set mercilessly against Joseph, in my liver too I suffered mercilessly and was judged for 11 months, for so long a time as I had been angry against Joseph. When we review the other testaments from the sons of Jacob, more information will come out about the plot against Joseph. Also, how the Most High punished the sons of Jacob and their children. In the testament of God, God said to his children to honor Judah and Levi, because from them the Most High will raise salvation to Israel. Do ye also therefore tell these things to your children, that they honor Judah and Levi, for from them shall the Lord raise up salvation to Israel. All of the fathers told their children to honor or follow Judah and Levi, because salvation for our people will come from them. Israelites, did you notice that all the fathers who command their children to honor or follow Levi and Judah didn't say to worship the one the Most High will raise to bring salvation to our people? Also, have you noticed that the fathers always say look for the salvation that is coming from Judah and Levi, then the fathers command their children to praise and honor the Most High? What the fathers say and what Rome taught you about the Messiah is very different. God said in the last days, his children would depart from the Most High and walk in wickedness. For I know that at the last, your children shall depart from him and shall walk in wickedness and affliction and corruption before the Lord. God did not disclose if his children was dispersed or in captivity. 
I believe the tribe of Gad remained in the land they sojourned after the Assyrian captivity. If the tribe of Gad was dispersed, God would have revealed this vital information to his children, just like his brothers did with their children. The tribe of Gad are shepherds. They remain shepherds in the land they live on until today. The disciples of Satan say the tribe of Gad are the modern day Native American Indians. Israelites, by now you should know the 12 tribe chart is false. The tribe of Gad is not the Native American Indians. The tribe of Gad is still in Africa. I'm pretty sure there are some Gadites in the diaspora because there is a remnant of all the tribes in the diaspora. When it comes to the tribe of Gad, the children of Gad are predominantly in Africa. The Native American Indians still live in their land. The Most High removed his people from his presence. Also, the Most High said his people would be in captivity in strange land. I will enslave you to your enemies in a land you do not know. For my anger will kindle a fire that will burn against you. The North American Indians are not descendants of the tribe of God. Israelites, it's important to know that the indigenous native to the Americas are predominantly Hamites. The testaments of the following patriarchs we've read said that their tribes was dispersed. Levi, Judah, Dan, and Issachar. Naphtali is in captivity in the land they sojourn. It was revealed to Naphtali that all the tribes would go into captivity. Benjamin and Gad did not disclose the whereabout of their tribes. Israelites, listen to our fathers and cleave to righteousness. Do not follow after the heathens you live among. The Most High is giving his people the time to repent in the awakening. Do not transform the awakening into a safe place to sin and overpowered with pride. Trust me when I say we are living in the last days. Although no one know the hour or time when salvation will come to us, guard your heart and mind from all evil. If you're from one of the tribes whose testaments we've read, listen to the commands of your fathers. Trust the Most High with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. But that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. But the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil.